Let's welcome in the third member of our broadcast team tonight, the one and only Taylor Bunch. Hey there, guys. This isn't just a first between UND and Arizona State tonight, but for the Ness family as well. Griffin, who is a junior for North Dakota, is suiting up against Arizona State. His younger brother, Tucker, plays for the Sun Devils. Now, with three years separating the two brothers in age, this is something that the Ness family never thought would be possible. You heard NDSU head coach Dave Richmond refer to his team as the Baby Bison. Well, this team is really embracing that role. Seven of the 13 guys on this roster have never played on the Summit League tournament stage until just this week. Now, if that's not enough, those new guys attribute to 39% of the team's scoring. North Dakota has 31 goals on the power play this year. Eight of those come from Reese Gaber. He joins us live right now. Reese, what works so well for you, especially when you're on the man advantage this season? Griffin Ness, a kid that's been in and out of the lineup all season long. For him, to net the eventual game winner, how did that make you feel as a coach? Pretty proud. Well, there's no doubt that teammates can become lifelong friends, but Joe LeMay and Jacob Gavin in Omaha are already there. They've been friends for more than a decade. The Coyotes are one of the best teams in the nation from beyond the arc. They only had one through 20 minutes. What does that say about your defense? Yeah, I mean, we were good. We got to be better in the second half. Athletes in Grand Forks will soon be enjoying the upgrades to three facilities near Red River High School that will cost in total more than $4 million. I'm Taylor Budge with your CU Mortgage Direct Midco Minute. After UND was shut out at home for the first time since 2018, that also meant it was the first time there were no fireworks displayed inside Ralph Engelstead Arena. Well, they were definitely put to use in the first period. Three goals by North Dakota. Ironically enough, there's some fireworks right now as they're in the 1963 National Champion UND hockey team as well tonight. Kansas City is playing with only seven players. They're in foul trouble. How can your depth help you in the second half? You know, I think we just have to keep pushing the tempo. UMD led by 20, just seven and a half minutes into the game. Minnesota State able to claw back, tie it up at 63, but ultimately NSIC Player of the Year and Conference Tournament MVP Brooke Olson taking over, finishing with 36 points. Yeah, the Mavericks never led in this game. Well, if you're a UND fan, can you think of any better way to cap off the end of the regular season? North Dakota, the comeback kids once again tonight, capping off senior night with a 2-1 win over 14th ranked Omaha. North Dakota improves to 16-13 and 6 on the year. They are locked in as the sixth seed in next weekend's NCHC quarterfinals. Welcome into the postgame show, Taylor Budge, Eric Fabian. So much fun. Like just genuine Exciting. smile after that game tonight. The seniors getting the job done on senior night. All of them contributing in one way or another. It was a, it was a great game. Um, obviously sending the seniors out that way in exciting fashion, getting the win. But to have the seniors contribute, three of the four honored tonight were on the score sheet. Um, great plays all around for those goals. But, man, what an exciting game to, I guess, for the 22-23 season to send this building out in style. Pretty darn fun. Brad Berry saying that the team isn't playing their best hockey yet either. So exciting to see the potential of this team as they are riding a six-game unbeaten streak, the best of their season. Coming in, though, to this one, Fabes, an overtime winner yesterday. North Dakota did not want to go to overtime for six straight games, and it was looking kind of like that through the first 40 minutes as both teams had plenty of offensive chances, but the goaltending, strong as usual tonight. Strong strong on both ends. Uh, I thought for sure this was going to overtime when it got tied up 1-1. I was, I was well prepared for an overtime game again. Jake Kaharski getting the start tonight. 11 saves for him in the first period as North Dakota had plenty of chances, but he was standing strong. More, uh, he just was really good all day. He was really good too at getting out. If you look, he's on top of that blue paint, the crease, and making himself big. So those shots, you really had to make a really good shot to get something by him, or you had to make a move laterally, which they did a couple times, and scored on those. Drew DeRayer making his 12th straight start for North Dakota, also riding a career-high five-game unbeaten streak coming in as well. Nine saves for him in the first 20. I thought DeRayer saw the puck very well through traffic tonight. Yeah, typically in the past, when, I, when we've been here, he had a hard time finding it coming through traffic. Really good at tracking the puck. Shots from the top coming through everybody. He was really good at finding those. You actually missed that one. That was over here, and you put a red ace down there and costed you a free move. There's something special about Thursday nights at the Shearick House. We're just going to enjoy a little bit of cards before we go to bed and get a little rest for the big race tomorrow. I'm going to lay these down first, so. It's a chance for Nick and his wife, Jessie, to spend time together. Is it my turn to go? I don't know. It's just kind of, you don't have to do a lot of thinking necessarily, but you kind of get to do something together. Hold that, so I'm going to pull one more. A simple deck of cards has been the ace to their relationship 
the past 18 years. If it's not playing cards for a few minutes, we definitely try to communicate before we go to bed for sure, and, and we try to make this a special time for both of us. Tonight, it's their way to wind down after another busy day. Three kids under eight, but it's fun. It's a good hectic. Now the Sheeriks are all in on another adventure. Deep down inside, I always thought if I can get some things squared away, maybe I can come back to this one day, and here we are now. For the first time in 13 years, Nick Sheerick is back in the driver's seat. For me, it's family first, then it's my job, then if there's some extra time, we'll go racing. All for 5-H. What has HUD taught me? He has taught me to not give up. Nick found his passion at the track two decades ago, alongside his brother Chris. My brother and I were just kids and we started. We got into sprint cars when he was 14, I was 11. That was when my old man bought our first race car. As expenses started to pile up for the family working to keep two cars on the track, Nick took a step back to let Chris keep his foot on the gas and focused on building his career at Rydell, a job he loved, but it ultimately took him away from racing altogether. I never ever did say that it was anything about retirement from racing because deep down inside, I always just thought that there would be a time that maybe we'd come back. It was an urge that he fought for 13 years. I tried really hard to stay away from racing. Flow Sports, Dirt Vision, all the different subscriptions that you can have to like watch races whenever you want. I canceled all that stuff. I just was like trying to do everything I could to not have any focus on it. I think he was trying to mask something that was deep down and thinking that if there was nothing to see or whatever, that it would go away. Then this past January, Nick was ready to take the chance, betting it all on his return. This gentleman out of Twin Valley, Minnesota had this roller. He's like, but uh, other than this car, he goes, I do have a, another frame. I was visiting with Jess a little bit and I said, you know, honey, maybe I'll buy this frame from this guy. And then as a hobby, over the course of a couple years, I'll just piece it together. And then maybe in a few years we'll race. I think half a day went by or something. He sent me a message. He goes, well, can you just take everything? I was like, oh, because like, I knew, you know, it's like I knew if I said, yes, I'll take everything that like, here we go, right? I think he pitched that and maybe two weeks later, we were on our way to Mayville to get a motor. So I was like, oh, okay, that's when I knew that this isn't just gonna be a little hobby that he wanted to definitely get back into it. This wasn't just a comeback. It was an entirely different car with new challenges. But there's so many special tools, jacks, jack stands, wheel wrenches, all these special fuel tools, you name it. And I'm like, holy, we sold all that stuff. And you don't really think about that when you're trying to build something back up. Yeah, after hot laps, maybe. More importantly, this return comes during a new chapter in Nick's life. When you double down, it's like you're going all in. This is the second time I'm giving this a shot, so it's like double the second time, and I'm kind of all in, I want to do it, and I, I want to kick some butt this time. Nick wears the hat of general manager, wingless sprint car driver, but his proudest title? Hi, guys. Dad. Oh, did you get a mask, Cam? Bo, Cam, and Hudson. Hey, dude. Not only Nick's inspiration, but reason for more. I said, well, what number do you think daddy should be? And Cam, my middle boy goes, five, be number five. It's not just the number, but the letter beside the five that holds this family together. So 5H is Hudson, uh, and for obvious reasons, Hud's gonna have his name on the card. Can we go in the trailer for a minute, bud? Yeah. In 2015, Nick and Jesse's first son, Hudson, was born with Down syndrome. He's been the light of Jesse's in my life, uh, obviously since day one and, and kind of led the path for everything. But Hudson will hold a special place in everybody's heart that he comes in contact with. And me, I want to make sure he gets a spotlight that he deserves. And if that's a little number H next to the five that I know that's him, that's great. Hudson's smile, infectious. His determination, unmatched. Are you ready for daddy? But if he can teach me and our family that you can do things and you can be good at them and you can go hard and figure it out, then damn it, that's what I'm gonna do too. I mean, everything revolves around HUD. So, you know, making sure that, you know, he might not have the same opportunity as our other boys to actually race, but to make sure that he can still be involved if it be through, you know, 5-H for Hudson or, you know, finding ways that he can still be involved and do all of the things to, you know, make it a one family unit. So when Nick takes the track, He's not just racing for himself. 
but for the ace in his heart. Look, hugs waving to daddy. When I raced back in the day, it's not that I didn't race to win or anything like that, it's just that it was very challenging and very hard. Um, now that I'm putting this together, like I have sights and goals that I want to win some races, and I'm going to do it until I do that for sure. Oh, that's a good one that you laid down there. Success isn't built on the number of wins or trophies in the garage. For Nick, I'm getting some cards here. <laughs> I know. It's the journey. We're trying. I'm certainly nothing special, um, but I'm definitely having a good time, and it feels good to be competitive. He is, you know, so focused, and when he gets a passion and find something that he really wants to do, he'll complete it. Whether or not he earns a trip to victory lane, there are still plenty of W's to take away from this experience. And if Nick ever forgets that, all he has to do is look up and remember the letter next to the five on his tail tank. If he can be determined and figure something out and do it with a smile on his face and not get too frustrated, then we can all learn a little bit from that. Making it to a championship game is the goal for any high school athlete, but for one Cavalier senior, winning today's Dakota Bowl wouldn't be just for him, but his entire community, along with his two biggest fans. Yeah. Football is a big deal around Cavalier. Sometimes being part of a team is bigger than any game. Demetrius Cano Avila knows that more than most. For him, football and his small hometown have been by his side through unthinkable moments. It has been a really big escape for me and like hard times through my life when there's been big bumps. And look, I would like to call them big hills because they're really hard to come overcome. He may not be the biggest player on the Tornadoes roster, but Demetrius makes his presence known. I'm probably the smallest center in the state too. I'm only 5'4 and like 170. He's high energy, high motor, always doing everything he can. That work ethic has helped Demetrius to never back down from a challenge or any of life's big hills. I know they're gonna be proud of me. Even being one of four siblings, Demetrius held a special bond with his mother Elsa. I want to be by her side all the time. Like I was a little chunky too, so I was like her little chunker, she used to call me. Then one night, 10 years ago, Demetrius was staying at his grandparents when they got the worst call of their lives. His grandma was the one who answered the phone. I come downstairs and she, she's on the floor crying and I was so confused what's going on as a little child. And then she started saying that your mom was not here anymore. Elsa passed away from a heart attack. From there, Demetrius and his siblings moved in with their grandparents. We knew that we were going to be safe with my grandma, and she became our, like, our new mom. But eight years later, tragedy struck again. She was like my best friend. The same week the tornadoes were making their first Dakota Bowl appearance in five years, Demetrius's grandma Maria was hospitalized with pneumonia. We just beat Linton to, to go to the dome, and then I get told that Grandma's in the hospital and she might not make it. I was at my grandma's side in the hospital a few days be, be, like before state, before we left. And I was just, it was, got down on my knees, just started crying. That was the last time Demetrius ever saw his grandma. She passed away four days before the state championship at just 65 years old. Why me? Why is this happening to me? And then if you th I think about it, why not me? Because I, I wouldn't want this to happen to anyone else. During life's biggest hills is when the Cavalier community stepped up. From meals to staying at teammates' homes, the support knew no bounds. I was like, why should I push these people away when I should go towards them? And I love this community that we have here. Cavalier football is a family. It always has been, always will be. And if somebody off the field has something come up and they need help, uh, anybody that can is right there to do anything they can do to support them. Demetrius didn't know what life would be like after Cavalier football until he recently discovered his grandma was still there to take care of him. I'm kind of lost now without my grandma and mom. And my grandma's always cheesed me to get these good grades. And, and now she's gone. And I was like, I'm not going to have enough money for college and all this. But matter of fact, she was saving up the whole time since I was living with her. She saved money up for me to go to college. And a promise from Demetrius. I'm going to go to college for her. 
football is the ultimate support for Demetrius. He's not afraid to take on a tough situation, and he just keeps succeeding. Um, no matter what you put up against him, he finds a way to overcome it. Every day before a game, I go to the end zone, get on a down a knee and pray, and tell him I know I'll make them happy and proud. On Friday, he'll get that chance to again with his team, community, and mom and grandmother always beside him. I told my grandma I want to be a champ so bad, and she's like, if you want to be a champ, you got to earn it. Now, Demetrius hopes to pursue a degree in criminal justice and ultimately one day work for Border Patrol. We're just getting started here in the nine-man championship. We'll have much more on the Lake Region State College Halftime Report coming up right after the break. My name is Caroline Gravel, and I'm going into 10th grade. Caroline's dance floor looks much smaller than her normal studio. It's really challenging, especially doing my open turns, hoping that I don't hit a wall. Making the adjustment from performing on a 94 foot long basketball court to the entryway of her house is the most noticeable change. Dancing in my little room and hoping <laughs> I make the team. But the butterflies that come with varsity dance auditions remain right on beat. Once you click that submit button, you can't really go back and you're just hoping that what you did in the in that video will show and hopefully the coaches like what you did. The idea of a virtual dance audition is something that West Fargo head coach Gretchen Staffsland stumbled upon online. A lot of college teams do video um, tryouts, so I had done a little research to see how they were doing things and decided that if I can teach 107 sixth graders virtually, I could hold a tryout virtually as well. Staffsland is a West Fargo graduate. She coached for 12 years before taking a break, so no doubt her name is familiar in the program. She also choreographed the Pacatana's high kick routine this past season. One that brought home the program's third UDA national championship. Although we did win, that wasn't really the whole thing. I had so much fun with my team and I would never trade it for anything. <laughs> After reaching the pinnacle of the high school dance world, it's somehow still back to this entryway dance floor. But that's just how things have to be right now. <laughs> for Caroline, that's okay. I'm really happy that we're at least trying out because a lot of sports have been canceled and I'm just hoping that we can make this work. For WDAY Sports, I'm Taylor Budge.